grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, to all the moms out there, happy Mother's Day. Um, happy that you could come to church and celebrate a little bit here. And Mother's Day is something that I believe is very appropriate, appropriate to celebrate at church. Because it's, it's a role that God has given to many people in our church, to many women in our church. And it's not an easy job, and it's a job that it's a blessing to many of us, and so we should celebrate good motherhood, good mothering. And one thing I've noticed as a pastor about mothers, and this is a sermon that I have to be very careful with, you know, because I could get in trouble. But um, one thing I've noticed is there's a lot of different styles of parenting out there, right? I don't know if you read any baby books recently, but there, there's a lot of them out there. There's the helicopter parent, right, that's watching over everything that their child does. There's the parent that just like, ah, kids will be kids and lets their kids, you know, run off wherever they want to. There's the authoritative. There's the, the parent that is their child's friend. There's many, many, many different ways of parenting. And, you know, who's to say which parents are good parents and which parents are not good parents? I mean, me, right? I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you that there are some parents that are good parents. There are some parents that aren't as good parents. There are terrible parents out there. There, there may be some of you that don't have a great re relationship with your mother. So on this holiday, it's like, oh, well, just Mother's Day. Something that Hallmark made up. I shouldn't really do much here. But motherhood is important to God. So it's important to us at this church. And w what makes a mother good? Well, if you look out there in the world, they'll, they'll boil it down to love, right? As long as a mother loves her child, then she is a good mother. And if you're not a mother, as long as you love someone else, right, you're, you're good in that relationship. But what, what does that really mean? Our society not only, right, has a very squishy view of what love is. It also has the same thing for what a mother is. I looked up what mother is, and I know it's around Mother's Day, so a lot of these are just cards, right? But so someone who sees the best in her kids even when they drive her crazy. Or number two, unconditional love. If that's what it takes to be a mother, I mean, I don't have to do a straw poll, but there are mothers out there that, don't always see the best in their kids when they're driving them crazy. It happens, right? Or you go to this one, one who does the work of 20 for free. Is he also a saint? That may be true, but is that something that they enjoy? Is that what makes a mother a mother? Is doing everyone else's work? I don't think mothers would be very happy with that. Or mother, a, a woman who loves unconditionally, leads by example, and puts others before herself. I mean, all of these are, are wonderful sentiments to have, right? All these are wonderful goals to, to shoot for. And I'm not going to pretend that I know what mothers are thinking or know what women are thinking at all. But I have talked to enough mothers as a pastor that I know that sometimes mothers aren't feeling like they are the one who is unconditionally loving and they're doing everything right. They feel like this is the Mother's Day card they should get. Am I a good mother, Susan? My name's Amy. <laughs> they try, right? But they're doing all these other things and then things are just slipping through the cracks. How do they hold it all together, right? Is love enough? What is love? Do, do you have to have unconditional love? Do you have to always be leading by example? Do you always have to put everyone else in front of yourself in order to truly be a mother and truly be a good mother? I mean, if that's the standard that we're setting out there, is that really attainable? Because that, that's pretty much the standard that God has for us, right? Right? God says, be perfect, because I, the Lord your God, am perfect. We look at our text today from 1 John. 
It says, dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. This is what love is. God is love. God is love. God equals love. And you go to another part of the Bible that talks a lot more about love, right? 1 Corinthians 13 has that long section, right? Love is patient, love is kind. Because it equals it, you can just switch it out, right? God is patient. God is kind. God does not envy. God does not boast. God is not proud. God is not rude. God is not self-seeking, not easily angered, keeps no record of wrongs, not delighting in evil, rejoicing with the truth. God always protects. God always trusts. God always hopes. God also always perseveres. God never fails. And if this is the love, if this is what makes relationships good, is it fair to switch out mom for this? Mom is patient. Mom is kind. I think sometimes... Mothers are the ones that hold themselves to these standards. People are the ones that hold mothers to these standards. We we look at the people around us, and it's not just mothers. We we look at other relationships, and we say, this is what you owe me. I'll love you if you are perfect, if you are kind, if you never fail me, if you never let me down. Is that love? If we're always requiring something from someone else, if we're just looking to that person or to ourselves to be the anchor, to be the rock of our relationship, we're going to let the other person down and they're going to let us down. It's difficult. It's difficult to try and do this, that God is love and love is mom, and they, I mean, to make mom a goddess, I mean, husbands and children treat your mother like one, but to, to, to think that that is what they have to do, for mothers to think this is what you have to do, that, that has huge implications. If we think to ourselves that we have to be perfectly loving, that, it, that if we don't love, then we don't know God. If we don't know God, then, then we're not born of God. If we're not born of God, then we won't have everlasting life. We can easily get into this spiral on this day and other days that I am not perfect. My love is not perfect. I need forgiveness because I don't always hope. I don't always persevere. I fail. We we fail in so many different ways of our lives. Mothers let children down. Children let mothers down. This is what love is, though. Love continues to show what God's love is. When when we look and and try and think about what love is, right? God is the one who is never going to fail you. God is the one who's always protecting you mothers and is answering your prayers to protect your children even when you can't. God is the one who is working through you God is the one that has brought you here to hear his word today. God is the one that gives you value and hope and strength. God has made you a blessing for so many other people in this world. But it's because the love of God flows through you. That's the thing to celebrate. That's the thing to look for. And I'm not saying don't honor your mother today. Just say, well, God is the one that should get the credit. Okay, there's literally a commandment that says honor your father and mother. So if your mother has done something wonderful for you throughout your life, obviously call them today. Husbands, tell your wives how great they are. Celebrate this day and honor it. But remember where love comes from. 
working through God, forgiving us for the times that we fail, for the times that we need it. Because this is what makes any parent good. This is what makes one parent better than another parent, one mother better than another mother. Something that I've learned as a parent is just how much my three daughters imitate their mother. I mean, they have a baby doll. They have the same expression on their face. They sing the same songs. They lay it down in the exact same way. They do, they try and do everything the exact same way. What makes a mother great is modeling Christ. Bringing their children to God. Reading to them, not just Dr. Seuss or, I don't know, whatever good book ever out there. I don't know why I'm blanking right now. But re- reading the Bible. Letting them know who their God is. I mean, for, for how much mothers, good mothers just, just work to, to put their children in the best schools, to buy the minivan with the highest safety rating, to do all of these different things. I mean, wouldn't they want to also... Let them know their child that all of their sins are forgiven? That they don't have to be afraid when they go out in the world because their God is watching out for them? That all of their sins are forgiven? That their value lies in the Lord? That no matter what, no matter how good the mother is, no matter how bad the child is, a God loves them. The one true God loves them. The one true God has taken away their sins. The one true God will watch out for them. The one true God will give them the strength to love in their relationships. This is why we celebrate. This is why we we thank our God. So, to, to all the mothers out there again, thank you. Thank you for bringing your, your family or your children here today to hear about God and His love. And to our God, Thank you for the mothers that you have blessed us with. Amen. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through salvation in Christ Jesus. Amen. I'd invite you to please rise. We'll continue by confessing our united faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated seated at the the right hand hand of the the Father. He will will come come again again in glory to judge judge the living and the dead, and and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. At this time, you may be seated. Um, We'll have our offering at this time. Uh, During the offering, uh, we will hear a song, uh, a hymn, Uh, written by Timothy Reynolds, excuse me, um, for Mother's Day. And throughout the hymn, there will be a refrain 
um, as Mother's Teach the Gospel True, which is written up here for you. All the lyrics to the hymn are on the back of the bulletin. You can flip it over. But after the first time through, every other verse will be the refrain, and you're welcome to join in and sing.